to another edition of an English guy watching wrestling. I'm the English guy. I'm Nick. Thank you so much for, click, for clicking on another video. And in this one, we're going to be reviewing this week's episode of Ring of Honor Television. And there were two matches this week. And as Ring of Honor have been doing a lot lately, they've been pushing the pure title a lot more. So, with that being said, another Ring of Honor pure championship title match this week, and topped off with a actually very good main event. So. You can tell already, it's going to be a good, good little review this one. So, with that being said, we're about the review, let's get into it. Opening match was Jonathan Gresham defending the Pure Wrestling Championship against Joe Keyes, a man he trained at the Ring of Honor Dojo. Now, of course, I think Jonathan Gresham is the head trainer at the Ring of Honor Dojo. Now, of course, Jonathan Gresham, long-time veteran of the business, has been over 15 years now, and you know what you're going to get with Jonathan Gresham, one of the best wrestlers in the world, seriously. He is so, so good against Joe Keyes, and Joe Keyes, I don't think he's been wrestling for that long, I think five, four, three or four years maybe, but in all seriousness, he held his own in this match against Jonathan Gresham, now, if you don't know what the pure rules are, basically it was a title that Ring of Honor introduced a long time ago, and it's, it was out of Ring of Honor since 2015, if memory serves correctly, but basically the concept of a pure rules match is, is you're not allowed to use closed fists, you're allowed three rope breaks, and after the third rope break, if you get to the ropes whilst you're in a submission, the referee doesn't have to break the hold. And if you use a closed fist twice, you get disqualified. And obviously, you're allowed to use forearms. So it is what it says, pure wrestling. And of course, Jonathan Gresham, very, very good at that. But so is Joe Keyes in this match, to be fair. And the exchanges they had were very, very good. Joe and... Jonathan both went for the arms in the in the match, worked very well. And in all credit, I've didn't I've never seen Joe Keys before in all seriousness. But he held his own. I mean obviously you can tell where that training from Jonathan Gresham went. I know for facts that Joe Key was not always trained by Jonathan Gresham, he was trained by somebody else before Jonathan Gresham, before he went to Ring of Honor. And it was a very good pure wrestling championship title match. And Jonathan Gresham showed that he can lose the belt, even though he won the belt. He's always he's already won half of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, but he lost the belt. Sorry, he didn't lose the belt. <laughs> he won the match with a very, very hard hit, let's say, hard hammerlock. But basically, Joe Keyes made Jonathan Gresham work in this match and using all three rope breaks Gresham did. I've never seen that from Gresham at all in a pure titles match or in a pure wrestling match, to be fair. And this was the kind of matchup that you want the pure wrestling championship to be advertised as this kind of match. Jonathan Gresham is showing that anyone on any day can have a great match with him, and Joe Keyes did have a good match with him. And I, I like this match. And again, I can't fault what Ring of Honor have done bringing back the pure championship, because as being a man who loves professional wrestling, it's good to sit back. So, you nope, know, two thumbs up to Joe and to Jonathan in this match. So, training position and the uh, <laughs> the teacher won the match. but. Good start to the good start to the year. I think itself. Next match was the the bouncers, the Beer City Bruiser, and Brian Malonis versus OGK, which is Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. Now, I've said it before. <clears throat> Matt Taven has always been one of my favourites to watch Ring of Honor for a long time because he's just so entertaining and very crisp and good in the ring and so good on the mic. If you've ever heard Matt Taven promos, you know that's true. And OGK and Obviously, OGK, as you know, former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions back in 2000 and something. <laughs> Actually, 2015, if I remember so correctly. And, you know, good to see them back. And Matt Taven and, o and Mike Bennett, like they've never not tagged. So, like, Matt and Mike Bennett was never away from Ring of Honor, shall we say, as a tag team just clicked so well. And against the Bouncers. Now, the Bouncers are, without a doubt, perhaps, I say... At the point of before the match, I'll get to it in a little bit. The biggest, maybe the biggest face tag team in all of Ring of Honor. I mean, they were obviously beer drinkers, you know, came from the bar, always high fiving fans. Not in this matchup, which was unusual. But I said I'll come to that in a minute. And, and in all seriousness, I don't think I've ever seen a bigger tag team in Ring of Honor than the Bouncers. So obviously, combined weight, I think over seven hundred pounds. So two big guys against two. Smaller guys in Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, but they made this match work to that advantage. Obviously, when you see the big men versus little men, I say little men, I say smaller men, I say that 
mentality in a match like this. You know it's going to be a fact that they're going to make their own weight go against them. Obviously, they're going to get the smaller guys, get them through, and the smaller guys will just use that athleticism, which they did. Both Mike and Matt Taven did. And to the credit, it works very, very well. Because when it comes to big um, this kind of match mentality, you always think about what kind of things they're going to do and what they can do. Both teams did it very well, to be fair. And it was a good main event. I'm thinking, hopefully, to see more of OGK back in Ring of Honor. Which I know that Mike's not long been back in Ring of Honor. But to see them back, I like it. I mean, I've always liked Matt Taylor, as I've said. Mike Bennett has always been a very, very reliable wrestler. And the bouncers, you know, big guys in Ring of Honor. And they work so well together. But until the end of the match, when Matt Taven and um, Mike Bennett won, Vincent came out after the match. And of course, those who know, Matt Taven used to be part of the kingdom, which had... Um, so, <laughs> Vincent, that's it, Vincent. Vincent, of course, you know... I call him uh, Rob Zombie in Ring of Honor because he looks like a little bit like Rob Zombie with the dreadlocks. And now, basically, and obviously with uh, Vincent, so that's why I said Vincent. So Vincent is also part of it. So Vincent is original part of it. Anyway, but basically, of course, Matt Taven and Vincent and the Kingdom might have a little bit of a feud right now. And obviously, at some point, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a tag match of some description of members of the Kingdom against OGK. And... Obviously, Matt Taven has been, I won't say the face of Ring of Honor for a while, that's not right, but he's been one of the top guys in Ring of Honor and one of the faces of Ring of Honor for a while too. So basically, Vincent came out and said, you know, this guy's holding it down. He said it to Beer City Bruisers, said it to Beer City Bruiser, who smashed a bottle over Matt Taven's head after the match, a beer bottle. And the way things with Vincent was doing it was a very good after the match promo. And... In Ring of Honor right now, Vincent is not allowed to touch Matt Taven. I think if he does get touched, he gets fired. And of course, Vincent was like coming down, coming down, trying to egg on Matt Taven to come towards him. And I think if Matt Taven touches him, he gets done as well. I'm not too sure how that part works. But anyway, it was a very good post-match promo by Vincent and possibly a heel turn for the Beer City Bruiser. And obviously, you know, his tag team partner, the big guy Malonis, he's not heel. You know, he, he, you know, he's part of the beer city bruisers, so the bouncers doing his thing. He's not heel. Yeah, it looks like he's heel. Part of the tag team did turn heel. So, interesting to see one of the most popular tag teams in Ring of Honor possibly going separate ways. So, I'm interested to see how that turns out. And, you know, it was a very good way to end this week because it's intriguing. It's got me interested to see what's going to happen next. And I won't say the beer city bruisers going to join the kingdom. I don't think that's exactly what's going to happen, but a good getting into actually a very good episode overall of Ring of Honor television. And as usual, Ring of Honor are doing very, very well since they started doing shows after the pandemic. And of course, so after the pandemic, not being able to do shows, keeping the wrestlers in a bubble that are going to be at the tapings, saying make sure everything's okay, keeping them, you know, make sure they're doing the test on them. And of course, Ring of Honor, as other wrestling companies are doing, taking care of the talent, making sure they're healthy, they're not co passing COVID on or any symptoms, you know, they're self-isolating in the bubble, they're making sure they're okay. So I give credit to Ring of Honor Shoe. They wanted to continue on doing shows and then making sure the talent are there that are safe to do it and doing it very, very well. I call, of course, no fans, but of course that's expected. So, you know, Ring of Honor, keep on doing what you're doing and another good episode of television this week. So that being said, that's it for this week for Ring of Honor. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy wrestling. Whatever wrestling you decide to watch next. I'll see you next time. Take care.